Hello everyone, this is Howie Jones here and we're going to fill up a uh, pathway today. We're going to put in all the layers of like just like a lasagna. A little bit of cardboard I just threw in there, we're just laying around so. I put in, uh, I chopped up a bunch of twigs, branches and stuff, you know, with my pruners and lined it a little bit. And I'll put in some more branched like whole pieces on top of that. And there we go. An old tree I didn't want. I'll chop it up with my pruners eventually. I'll just go along with a long handle pruner, chop it up, lay it down. That's what you want to lay them. Lay everything down in the pathway. Just chuck it all in there. It's a. Uh, it's just the, the continuation of the last pathway fill in that. Okay, here we go. We'll chop it up. It's pretty simple. You want to lay it down. And um, this branch, this tree died, my neighbor took it out. And uh, instead of bringing it, trucking it all the way to the Sandwich Municipal Yard, and then they truck it all the way up to Heartland or wherever else, it just goes into, it stays right here. It's, it has a zero carbon footprint on it. That's what you're looking for. You're not trucking anything anywhere. So the neighbor, she uh, dug it out because it died in actually delivered it to my address which was pretty good and uh, she has a vegetable patch now and she's growing a few things so um, yeah and this is the soil bank it's a pathway soil bank things seem to be always evolving it's quite neat so you line it all up the, the entire pathway and uh, We've been gathering up local waste from uh, uh, Shrubland Nursery just down the road. Bruce, Bruce uh, has a little Shrubland there, and he had he cleaned up this year. And there was a bunch of, you know, sawdust and leaves and twigs and stuff. And he basically put it all in in. Um, large containers and I just stopped by and picked it up with the dolly it was really easy it wasn't heavy it was really light and I moved it here and I stored it here and this is part of it this is his boxwood and um, this is some brush that I've chopped up a little bit and I'll start filling it in now you store it there just not for very long until you have enough of everything gathered up like we had to gather this stuff up at different times so and um, this is going on the bottom <clears throat> to act as a, um, you know, as a nutrient feeder and a water. It soaks up water, you know, and it keeps water here. And I'm putting a row of gojis on top of this pathway, and I'm changing the recipe a little bit because I'm, I'm putting in a row of gojis on this entire fenced part here, so I don't have to ever see the fence. And, we grow raspberries on there presently, but um, um, we have a lot of raspberries and the more gojis we have, because we eat those and juice them, make pies from them, superfood. You can live on them. Lyceum barbarum, I think. Well, you can look it up. It's one of the best gojis there is. That's the one that's the, the rave about. So we're filling up this um, pathway here with brush and um, first first there was all the branches that you know chopped up and put it on the bottom and then you saw me or you noticed me um, chopping up the tree that had died at the neighbors and dropped it off so uh, we'll fill this up um, with uh, about 250 pounds of coffee grounds 300 pounds maybe somewhere in there and about two yards of yard waste and then about 75 liters of kitchen waste that's been saved in buckets and we'll layer that in there too with the coffee grounds but first we we line it with a lot of brush and um, twigs and branches and stuff like that and that really puts in a lot of rich humus as that decomposes that's your 
that's your um, feeder for for the gojis that I want to put a row of gojis along here so so the I never have to do anything and uh, it's a uh, it's a whole ecosystem that you're building here and we lime it at the end too you know I you won't see it in the video but I walk around you know, you know throw two three four five cupfuls of lime all over it and at the end there and then soak it in with water and it sweetens it up and all the rotting happens and, and you know, here we go this is part of my fig tree that goes in there too and uh, it's kind of like a mini Hugo culture, you know, if you want to call it that. But, you know, just the way, this is yard waste and from the neighborhood. And try not to use invasive plants like ivy or daphne or anything like that. Don't, don't put that in there. Or, you know, a lot of people don't like blackberry. And there's like, you know, there's hogweeds and stuff like that you certainly wouldn't put that in your pathway you know you, 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 you try to stick with uh, deciduous hardwoods and some you can put in some conifers but you know only you know 15 20 percent conifer you know needle trees you want you want round leaf trees that's the best and they can be evergreen or or, or um, ones that lose their leaves. It, it doesn't matter. As long as it's not too acidic and have volatile oils. You don't want the volatile oils. And if you are dealing with, you know, a lot of people put in cedar in their hugel culture. Or in, you know, not a lot, but I've seen people do it. But don't do that. <laughs> don't put cedar in here. You know, you, you can use cedar in your pathways and let it rot and then put some... You know lime on it and wood ash and neutralize everything and then use it you don't you don't put cedar underneath the, the pathway or a hugo culture or permaculture because it creates a toxicity that's not good for the environment and it's not good for humans you know it's not no good at all for humans to eat the uh, hugo culture that off of a hugo culture that's designed with cedar And uh, we're getting there though. Wow, the pathway is really filling in. So we have our layer of brown branches, now we're layer of green branches. And then after that you you want to put in start putting in your coffee and your kitchen waste. But you want your layer of brown, layer of green, just like a lasagna. When you make a lasagna, you can't go wrong. But we've put in some some chopped up branches, some really good sized branches, and this will all decompose in two or three years. It, it'll just be nothing in there. It'll be um, <clears throat> it'll be just rich soil. Wow, look at that, <laughs> the pathway is almost gone, that was a pretty good sized trench for a pathway, it's, it, was, it was really, you know, that must have been 20, 15, 20 feet long, and 2, 3 feet wide, and depth also a couple, 3 feet, so, this is very natural, this is, this is what's supposed to happen. It's not supposed to be trucked away to a bin and then trucked away again. That's just unacceptable. That nature doesn't do that. That's that's not natural. And uh, you're just putting a lot of pollutants in the air, trucking away what what's to be utilized as rich humus and soil bank building and, and per, uh, you know food forests, gardening. You, that's what it's used for. I see people lining up to give it away, to throw it away. And uh, it's uh, now that everybody, well, not everybody, but quite a few people in the neighborhood bring it here. 
and we never have any complaints about anything and uh, it has been going on a while and we've uh, we're really having a good time doing this it just shows that sustainable urban food forest is uh, is the future you can't go wrong so then you throw in this stuff here was off my um, from my chicken coop this this here was the the, the brush from the or the the barley hay from the chicken coop that we we will even layer a bunch of that in and uh, I know it looks kind of funny but this is uh, this is soil bank building and uh, that's this is what goes on and uh, look at there's no more really just no more trench like pathway that's dug all dug out because we dug them out and, and we emptied them and now if this is the part where we're filling them up and um, and uh, that's very exciting that it, you know your kitchen waste isn't hauled away it's put right into the soil bank and you're not wasting anything and you're keeping your soil you're not buying soil and and it's great mulch I mean you can put it around your garden your trees and around your veggie patch and and it just adds nutrients and be aggressive mulching I mean that's the wave of the future Helen Chestnut just put a piece out in the Times columnist about aggressive mulching just mulch 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 and then I mean how, you can't go wrong <laughs> it, any everything will grow it'll look after itself it'll look after itself with nutrients and moisture it'll retain moisture it's absolutely wonderful just just wonderful and this is a really large soil bank we we're just doing for a demonstration and here's the yard waste or no this is the kitchen waste so sorry this is all the waste in the kitchen eggshells and bones and just anything that was was boiled over a two-week period we kept so it's a little bit uh, we kept it with a lid on it so there's no smell or no one attract any critters so now we're going to empty it all onto the pathway and it's all throughout just like a layer you know, like lasagna and then you, you have to think lasagna when you're layering for this here we go here's another bucket full and it's just all the coffee grounds from your eggshells and lemon peels orange peel apple peel cores celery stock bad tomato whatever you have it doesn't matter it all goes in there and it helps break down everything so on top that you know you put in put in quite a bit of that and uh, then you take your coffee grounds and then you layer that on top and then you layer some bark mulch on it and some yard waste you just keep going and it builds this large mound and I plan on putting on uh, goji's or yeah a row of goji's here this is a place that a row can go so why not have them a superfood and uh, goji's are great you can eat the leaves and salad make soup base or freeze the berries or eat them fresh oh here here's all the coffee grounds bags and bags yeah there's a few hundred pounds 250 maybe 300 pounds of coffee grounds go into this too into the soil bank and then um, I'm gonna leave that I'm never gonna dig this one out anyway because I'm planting goji's on top of it but I could I could just as easily uh, empty it next spring uh, onto the forest floor but I'm not going to though I I wish to have another row of goji's I actually ran out of goji's this year first time so uh, oh, here we go there's some more coffee grounds it's all in bags we're gonna empty it out it's just a matter of putting it all through the the soil bank it's, it's, a, it's a fairly good little project for the for the beginning of spring and you're, you're always giving to the garden because the garden's always giving back the forest food garden you know, so you have to you have to keep up your keep up with projects like this and this goes on for between five and ten years until you you know like for an acre it'll probably take a few years to do something bigger would be more you know because you it's a gradual pace it's nothing instant unless you know you have millions of dollars <laughs> this didn't cost me anything 
this was free, but you know, if you want an instant, an instant uh, food forest, you, I mean, you're gonna pay. And then if you wanna build one, this is how it's done. And uh, you get to see it for free. So it's up to you it's if you got the cash or if you got the time. So that's, um, that's why this here is, uh, I've built quite a few of these pathways and food gardens and hugel cultures and permaculture. And, just you know just all kinds of food gardening and uh, this is the best way right here this is uh, this is what I I do and um, we end up with tons and tons of this beautiful rich black humus and so we'll cut open these bags of coffee grounds and we'll empty them out on top of the on top of the kitchen waste and we'll spread it in the pathway there we go look at that rich black coffee grounds yeah, all provided by Starbucks and uh, Tim Hortons and uh, anybody else that wants to give us free coffee grounds because it costs them to move it to the landfill and we're cutting down on the carbon footprint here by taking this you know it's not being thrown in a landfill so hey that's a bonus and it's being utilized by nature and uh, there's no inconvenience to man and uh, it's part of your zero mile diet zero carbon footprint i mean <laughs> you can't go wrong with this this is number one this is what you're supposed to do you don't throw things away in nature that's that's just not as my grandfather would say you're not right in the head <laughs> look at this coffee grounds This is all the coffee grounds. Uh, look how, oh yeah, look at the richness to that. That's wonderful. This is a real nice soil bank. A pathway soil bank. That's pretty cool. And uh, here's another one here. We're gonna have, there's two more left, two more bags. There you go, we're gonna dump it. Uh, there's a lot of layers here now this is uh, this will decompose quite a bit sink a little bit too you know So that was it, that's all the coffee grounds are in now, and uh, now is when we load up some uh, some bark mulch and more brush. We, we put on a little bit more of chopped up brush and um, leaves, lots of leaves, that kind of thing, and um, gathered up, raked up, you know, waste from a yard, my neighbor's yard there, just needles and from needle trees and leaves and twigs and grass clippings and stuff so it's all in the pile there and I'll just spread it on top of this and then uh, lime it at the end with a few cups of lime spread around you know three four five cups of lime whatever you don't need a lot of lime but just a little bit a few cups a big one like this and um, you'll have uh, you'll have a soil bank that's now going to turn into your nutrient feeder for a row of gojis. Can't go wrong with this. Here we go. And uh, we'll fill it in and that, that'll be the, the exciting part. Oh, losing the camera focus there for a little bit, but that's okay. And uh, here we go. Oh uh, yeah, and here the, now we're filling in the top part with the mulch, and this really cuts down on any smell or critters or anything. This is a this is a mixture of of uh, waste from my yard, and it's bark mulch and hay and 
but there's no seed and it's barley barley grass you know it's from the chicken coop so there's no seeds in this <clears throat> so uh, and we're just about done here we're, 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 we're about two or three minutes away from being done and then you see it from beginning to end of filling in your pathway and this is a, a large pathway this was a this was a very large one that we filled in and uh, it's just awesome to build and then and it's going to be even better because I'm going to plant uh, a row of gojis here you know a dozen or so all along the fence line here I made them last year the clones so we get to plant them this year so that'll be fun Here's all the mulch. Look at that. But if I wanted to, I could, in, by next year, I could dig this out and spread it in the yard. It'll be just rich black humus. But that's not what I'm going to do. But that's what you, you would do with, normally with a soil bank, though. And not as much heavy, thick brush like that I put down, like the big branches and stuff you wouldn't use that because that doesn't break down but because I am using this for a uh, for planting the gojis I, I didn't mind putting some in the bottom it's a uh, it's great for absorbing moisture and uh, nutrients you, you know it's, uh, it adds to the soil tr dramatically everywhere on this property it's it's the soil has been amended by several feet in, in some cases or a meter or if you're into metric <laughs> whatever so um, we're just about done this is uh, this is it gets filled in and you, then eventually you just walk on it for a little bit to get it to to, to go down so it's just sitting there and stomping on it we have to walk by anyway so we'll, we'll stomp it in the, in that manner and don't forget the lime I must tell you you have to put the lime in if you're growing um, alkaline lovers if it's acid loving like raspberries and tomatoes and blueberries you don't put the lime in the soil is is, is wanted to be uh, acidic so but in this case we're putting the lime down because uh, we're growing going cheese there they're kind of neutral lovers so they're not acid or alkaline they're neutral there we go look at this so you can't see nothing now that kitchen waste is gone and the coffee grounds they're gone and this is a mixture of green uh, yard waste and brown yard waste and bark mulch it's a mixture now it's just a mound that I made and you don't have to be fussy with your too much you know just whatever you have it's it's it really it'll all turn to mud just don't use cedar though I must stress that people are using cedar don't use redwoods and it, and and redwoods m mulch you can use that in the redwood, the cedar mulch in the pathway where you don't want weeds. Of course, nothing will grow there. But after a year, then uh, you can use the cedar that mulched, like the cedar chips. And, but uh, you know they gotta they gotta sit around for a year, and, and the volatile oil has to leave. And you know it's. But I recently saw uh, noticed uh, some people using cedar. It's like, and they, they wouldn't stop, so all you could do is tell them, put in a bit of lime, you know, and I, I told them, maybe you bury it three foot deep instead of one foot deep on the Yugo culture, but I don't know if they're, I think they got it, you know, some people, you know, they don't like being told something they think they know, <laughs> so anyway, this is just about done, and, uh, look at this, this is, uh, your soil bank for and you disposed of how much yard waste and kitchen waste that never didn't have to be trucked away and you're improving your uh, food force and your uh, food production I mean you just can't go 
wrong with doing things so like in this way of soil banking in your pathway it's uh it's definitely the future it, it's it's here to stay and it's up to the community and the neighborhoods to to figure out you want to keep paying the piper by shipping all your waste out over the Malahat or out to Heartland or do you want to just have a nice rich beautiful garden that gives you food um, yeah this is uh, stomping time in the pathway see how it's all stomped down you want to you want to really compress it the best you can and um, and uh, we're going to walk up and down it a couple of weeks before I even plant the gojis. Because you have to go by, there's several trails through the food forest here. So this is one of them. It won't be once the gojis are growing though. But uh, we'll leave it alone for a couple, three weeks of, you know, tours coming and whatever. Going up and down it, they'll flatten it out. But this was a really big soil bank. <laughs> this is awesome. This looks really great. Well, it's been great chatting your ear off, and this is going to stop soon. And, uh, I hope you've learned uh, how to make a soil bank and save yourself some money. If you don't have to put out that green garbage can, that's 75 bucks right there. That's off your tax bill. And then so many dollars per month. I mean, as you're saving money by doing this and gaining food. And I think you're making money. Well, you figure it out. It's all good for you. 